Crossroads. Each Crossroads story is based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi, the men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. These dramatic stories are presented with the cooperation of our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum. Central Hospital, a house of birth and a house of death, complete with dedicated men in white and angels of mercy, where both rich and poor arrive, some through the front door and others by ambulance in the dead of night to a rear entrance marked emergency. Why don't you guys stop bringing things to our back door in the middle of the night? Ah, now that's more like it. Young and pretty. What's her story? Attempted suicide. Jumped out of a four-story window. Some small hotel over on West 49th Street. Four story? She wasn't kidding. Uh, lucky she bounced off the awning. Any name? Well, we didn't wait to find out. It was Mark Rush. Inside. Okay. Easy does it. Chaplain, Chaplain Ferris. Here's the information on that girl they just brought in. Oh, thank you, Miss Wilton. Name Viola Southern, age 23, occupation none. No relatives or immediate friends, evidently from out of town. Recent address, Hotel Eden. Bill unpaid two weeks without funds. Possessions being held by hotel management. A week before Christmas. No wonder she jumped. I feel there's no justification for suicide, Miss Wilton. Sorry, Chaplain. However, that might be a little hard to explain to the young lady. Uh, what's the medical report? Condition critical. We've had her in surgery for over an hour. There, it's all right. You're safe now. You're in Central Hospital and in good hands. Hospital? Yes, you've had a bad accident. But you're going to recover. Accident? I jumped. I jumped out the window. Oh. But you're all right now. I'm not dead. You're very much alive, my dear. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you're not well enough to be home for Christmas. Home? Good morning, ladies. I trust you slept well. Oh. Why, Chaplain Ferris, I had no idea you were here. And is this the patient they all gave up? They told me the death to make up the bed. In fact, they're wheeling a patient in from emergency, I believe. Oh, I'll have to report this. Miss Schmidt, please don't report anything till you locate Dr. Rutledge. Dr. Rutledge? Yes, I'm not sure if he's on duty this morning. He was here most of the night. But paging, please, and hurry. Why'd you put the screen around me? Does that mean I'm dying? No, no, that's just for privacy. You're in good hands now, and the doctor will be here presently. Doctor? Aren't you the doctor? Who are you? I'm Chaplain Ferris. Chaplain? Yes, I'm the senior Protestant chaplain of the clergy here. You see, I'm assigned to this hospital by the New York Protestant Episcopal City Mission Society. Were you... Were you going to perform last rites on me? I'm only here to comfort you, my dear. Please try to bring yourself to confide in me. I only want to help you. Where is your home, Viola?
Your name is Viola, isn't it? Not my real name. Would you care to tell me what your real name is? Yeah, I want you to trust me. You do believe me when I tell you that I'm your friend. Oh! Now, please, please try to relax. Do you want me to stop talking? You must believe God is your friend, my dear. Never doubt that. He gave you life in the first place. He restored it to you again during the night. What was it that made you feel you could solve your problem by jumping out that window? I couldn't stand it any longer. I was alone, always alone. Nobody to talk to, no one to listen. Phone never rang, no letter, no telegrams. And then the rattling of the pipes would begin. All day long, I'd hear it louder and louder until I couldn't stand it any longer. Was that why you jumped out the window, Viola? Yes. Yes, I, I couldn't stand it any longer. I... You want to know the real reason why I jumped? Please don't call me Viola. I can't stand the name. That's why I jumped. Because I wanted to kill Viola Southern. <laughs> Sedative. How long has she been conscious? About ten minutes, Doctor. First she was quite calm, then all of a sudden this. Shock. <laughs> Not to be unexpected after the ordeal she's been through. Pulse, fairly normal. Respiration, okay. Color, good. I think she'll pull through physically, despite the damage to her body. Doctor, what about the damage to her mind? Ah, that's a horse of another color. Call Dr. Ashley in psychiatry. Of course, if you don't help me, I can't help you. Then how is it you don't know my real name? That will come later. Your name, we don't need it, Press. The main thing now is to help you. Go ahead. A good cry will help. Ah, what have we here? Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Stop it. Take it away, take it away. Oh. Oh. Nurse, oh. Uh, please oh. take those things out of here. No, leave them where they are. I'm sorry, Doctor, but it's important these decorations remain. They represent a reality that must be faced. I understand, Dr. Ashley. You wish me to remain? Not necessarily. I'm going to leave her alone with Chaplain Ferris for a little while. He seems to have more success with her than the rest of us. What's all this to do about Christmas? Would you care to talk about it? You are my friend, aren't you? I couldn't tell the others, but, but I'll tell you. I hope you won't tell the doctors. Promise. It'll be all right. You see that Merry Christmas sign at the foot of the bed? That's an omen. What kind of omen? An omen of death. You see, Chaplain, the letters are red. Red like the color of blood. My blood. And the tinsel. Count the strands. There are eight of them. And there are eight days from now until Christmas. Each one of the strands counts for a day. Eight days. And then I'll die. You mustn't feel this way, my dear. Christmas is a time for joy, a time for happiness. Christmas is the birthday of the Christ child. There's nothing evil about it. Yes, there is. Yes, there is, you see. On Christmas Day, I'll be dead. Only if you want it that way and you don't. Let us both pray that you don't. We would have been married on Christmas Eve. 
Who were you to marry? What was his name? Oh, what difference does it make? He's gone. And on Christmas Day, I'll be gone, too. <laughs> Nurse. Nurse, please. I think Dr. Ashley will bear me out that, medically speaking, she could actually will physical harm to herself. True, gentlemen. If the girl feels this impending doom strongly enough, it's quite possible that Christmas Day would mean her death. Then what's the solution? Well, so far, you have her confidence, Chaplain Ferris. You must try to get her away from this belief of impending danger. There are only eight days until Christmas, and once we get her past that date, her fear will diminish, and I think we can straighten her out. But right now, you're the only one who can help her. I have another solution, if it can be done. Find a boyfriend. Hmm. Now, where does a good sleuth begin his search? Oh, yes. At the scene of the crime. <laughs> Here's the rest of her things. Hmm. Look, here's a makeup kit. Was she in the theater, an actress? Probably. That's what they usually say they are. Girl alone in the hotel, an actress or a model. Like a check with actor's equity. That might be a lead. What's this? Looks like Christmas present. Merry Christmas to David with all my love. Christmas present she can afford, but not a hotel bill. Oh, these young twerps. This is signed Barbara. Did you ever hear Viola Southern referred to as Barbara? No, oh, but that doesn't prove anything. They can change their names just as fast as they can change the color of their hair. Might I see your register? I'd like to compare the signatures. She moved in here about six weeks ago. There we are. Number second, Viola Southern, Batavia, New York. Look, the signatures are identical. And Viola Southern is Barbara. Barbara who? Here, Mr. Cobb. Well, here's a list of her telephone calls. Nine dollars and sixty cents worth. Are there any long distance calls on there to Batavia, New York? No. Mm, all, all locals. Now, here's one number that reoccurs quite a bit. Bryant 94589. Could we ask information for the address of that number? I don't know what Bryant 94589 is. It's a rehearsal hall way over on West 44th Street. Take five, girls. And I mean five. <laughs> Chaplain Ferris, Central Hospital. What is this, some charity? In a way. A girl named Viola Southern is rehearsing here to play the early part of this month. I got the information from Actors' Equity. She's now in Central Hospital in critical condition. She can't remember her name or her parents. Anything you can tell me about her may save her life. Viola Southern, does that name mean anything to you? Oh, I'm afraid not. They come and go like passengers in the subway. A couple of other halls down the block might try them. So I can't help you, Mr. Chaplin. Thanks for your trouble. rattling steam pipes. Please, I'm sure this is the right rehearsal hall. You must keep a list of the various casts rehearsing here. Please look back in your records early in December. The play was called from now till dawn. The girl's name was Viola Southern. Viola Southern. Don't yell. I ain't deaf. Viola Southern. Ah, that rings a bell. Youngster, about 23. Dark red hair. Big eyes. Kind of sad looking. I remember I was kidding her one day about her name. That ain't your real name, I bet, I said. I bet that you took Viola from Viola Allen and Southern from Southern and Marlowe. By golly, Pops, you hit it right, she says. Except that I took Viola from Twelfth Night and, and Southern from the Southern Pacific Railroad. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There's something here she left here a couple of days later. Oh, here it is. It's a part she was rehearsing. There's a name on it. What does it say? Viola Southern. No, oh, on the other side. Where did she draw the picture? Barbara Moore. And that's her picture. 
Where did you get this? And she come running down the stairs, crying like a baby. She threw this in at me, and she says, keep it. I won't be needing it anymore. And then she slams out of that door, sobbing like her heart was broke. Did you ever find out what happened? Oh, that's the last I ever see of her. My oldest son. <laughs> she certainly done some acting that day. <laughs> you mind if I keep this? Well, I guess it'll be all right. David Walsh. What about David? Where is David now? I don't know. He's just gone. I couldn't go then, but he left anyway. So that's what you quarreled about. He wanted you to go with him, but you were rehearsing in a play. Here's the part you were going to play. The doorman gave where did David go? I don't know what you're talking about. David always called you Barbara, didn't he? And after the quarrel and after he went away without you, you began to hate the name of Viola Southern. You wished to destroy her. Yes. Yes, that's why I jumped out the window. I failed that time. But look, there are only two strands left. Only two days before Christmas. <sighs> Time was running out for Barbara Moore. There were only two days left before Christmas, and each hour found her sinking lower in the pit of depression. The chaplain spent every spare minute from his exacting duties trying to trace down the girl and David Walsh. There was a young fellow called for her a few times, but not in the last couple of weeks she was here. Do you recall his name? Was it David Walsh? Did you ever hear her call him by name? But you don't remember seeing this boy the last couple of weeks she was here. No. No, she spent most of her time in her room. When she did go out, she'd always come back alone, make a beeline for the desk and ask if there was any mail, and there never was. And she'd stand there for a minute like she was going to ball and then head for the elevator. Never bothered to go looking for a job, probably waiting for money from home. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for giving me your time. If any mail or calls come for the girl in the next couple of days, would you be good enough to call me at Central Hospital? Oh, and by the way, her real name is Barbara Moore. Hey, wait a minute. We're holding a telegram for a Barbara Moore. Yeah, here it is. Barbara Moore. Came in the day before yesterday. No, 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 wait now, wait now. That's against the law. I'll take the responsibility. And a letter came for this Barbara Moore two weeks ago. It's from San Francisco. It's what we've been looking for. No answer to my letter. Still hoping you can get here by Christmas Eve. All arrangements made for our wedding is planned. We'll wire money for transportation and expenses as soon as I hear from you. I love you. Hurry, David. No address? The address must be in the letter. Where's the letter? Well, I, I returned it to the center the day before yesterday. You returned it? What'd you do a dumb thing like that for? Well, we had no Barbara Moore registered here. I held it for two weeks. This fellow was going to send her money. The hotel might have got off the hook, but no, you got to send the letter back to the return address. How come you got so efficient all of a sudden? How was I to know that Viola Southern's name was Barbara Moore? It isn't his fault, Mr. Cobb. David Walsh always thought of her as Barbara Moore. Probably resented her stage name. There must be some way to trace this telegram in San Francisco. It's for you, Chaplain. San Francisco calling. Yes, Chapman Ferris speaking. We have located your party. Hang on, please. Doctor, they found him. How in the world did they find him? No address. Well, on every telegram, there's a code number which designates the particular area in the city from which the telegram was sent. I had the San Francisco operator check all the hotels in that area, and at last, they found that David Walsh registered. Hello, Chaplain Ferris. Yes, is this David? This is David Walsh in San Francisco. I got your message. You said it was urgent. 
It is, David, most urgent. It's Barbara. Barbara? What about her? She's not... No, but it's important you get here as quickly as possible. She's in Central Hospital. Hospital? So that's why she didn't answer my letter. She never got your letter, David. You addressed it to Barbara Moore. She was registered as Viola Southern. You alone can save her life. I'll take the first plane I can get space on. Bye. Dr. Ashley, what are we going to do with 608? How's that? Why does that frustrated Sarah Bernhard rate a single room? All she does is lie there and mumble about how she'll be dead by Christmas. That isn't too long to wait, is it? This girl is in a critical condition. She came in here alone and friendless with a tag on her. She could very easily have been shoved into a corner like an old piece of luggage in a check room. Those things often happen in a large institution. Nobody's fault, just too many patients for proper personal attention. Luckily for this girl, she found a friend. I thought that plane was due at LaGuardia at five o'clock. It's past seven now. I know, I just checked with the airport again. Still delayed due to the storm. Last report, they were set down in Chicago. Chicago? But that's three hours flight in normal weather. Time of arrival now unknown. They hoped it would be in before midnight. Very faint. Has she talked at all? Just seems to be counting the minutes. What time is it? It's quite early, Barbara. No, please. Please just let me alone. Just let me alone. Barbara, it's David. David's flown all the way from San Francisco just to keep his Christmas date with you. How could I have ever thought he wouldn't? Oh, Chaplin, I've been so wrong. So very wrong. By the way, Barbara, it's ten minutes past midnight. Merry Christmas.